So if you're familiar with these engines at all, you already know where this is going. In fact, a few of you clever bastards have already left comments asking if I'm going to do this. Today I'm going to fix the Achilles heel of these Cummins engines. Something that everybody needs to do to their 12 valve, otherwise you will run into problems. It'll turn it from a million mile engine to a 300,000 mile engine or something and we don't want that, so let's get started. All right, I wanna try and show you how I just cracked this loose because I think it was a useful trick. It's gonna be a little hard to film though, so bear with me. The basic principle at work here is that if you have a pulley with a belt around it like this, the amount of friction, the amount of holding power you get on that pulley is determined by the angle of wrap around the pulley. So if I have a belt like this, that's approximately 50% angle of wrap versus a belt like that, that's approximately 100% angle of wrap, I'm gonna get way more friction on this pulley with 100% wrap. In fact, when I was in engineering school, one problem they gave us was, say you have a thousand pound cow that a farmer is trying to hold back with a rope, how many times does that farmer have to wrap the rope around a tree so that he can hold back the cow with just five pounds of force or something? And the answer was something like only three or four wraps before five pounds of force is holding back a thousand pounds on around the tree in that circumstance. So the basic principle was I wanted to wrap this belt around the pulley as many times as possible. So I pass the pulley through here and I do that. That puts us at 360 degree angle of wrap. I wrapped it one time around the whole thing, but I can do a lot better than that. If I just take this pulley, I can actually roll it around there a couple times so I can actually wrap this belt around that pulley two or three times. That gives me 800 degrees of wrap or something like that. And not only that, now I can also take this loose end here and just wrap it around the alternator. So now I have like 800 degrees of wrap around here and then it's on the alternator. Keep in mind that the fan clutch bolt is reverse thread so I need to try to go clockwise to loosen it. And I was able to break it loose by hand just like that. I didn't need a hammer or anything. Without needing any special tools, that was a pretty easy way to get that clutch off. Maybe it would work for you too if you're trying to do something like this. With the fan off, this is a better perspective on what I did. As you can see, I wrapped it around here twice or two and a half times, and then I just grabbed the other end on the alternator like that, and that is very firmly held there. I can't rotate that by hand. This is why it's really important if you have a big supercharger or something up here that the belt wraps around the supercharger as much as possible. It really changes the amount of friction. Here it is, the little bugger that causes all the problems. This little pin here. See, it's a dowel pin that is used for aligning the front timing casing and all that with the engine block. And aligning pins are good. They help you get this thing on exactly where it needs to be. The issue is that this little aligning pin, because of the vibration of the engine, will work its way out and it'll fall down onto this gear, and then this gear will shove it into the side of the timing case. So that's one way to tell if you've had this issue, is if you hear a horrible bang, and then this side of your timing case is damaged. So the fix is pretty simple. People sell lots of kits to do this, but what you can do is you can just take this mounting bolt, Use this timing bolt to bolt a small plate that'll hold this dowel pin in so that it can't slide out and run into this gear. So it's a pretty simple solution. They sell kits to do this, but I'm just gonna cut a plate myself. It's no big deal. And that's how we're gonna make sure that my Cummins doesn't explode. Taking care of that little dowel pin.
There is the finished product. I wanted to make it long enough so that it couldn't rotate down into this gear. So that's something to keep in mind, make it long enough that it gets stuck here and can't rotate down and hit that gear. And it's pretty easy to do. If you have an angle grinder and a drill, you can easily do this yourself. Otherwise you can just buy one of these kits online to do this. Now that the killer dowel pin is fixed, the other thing I wanna do while I'm in here is do the front seal. Let's do that next. So in order to install that crank seal, I cut the lips off of the old crank seal so I could use it as an installation tool. I had to cut the lip off so that it would easily slide over this plastic installation tool, which keeps the, lip, keeps the lips spread open on the new one. This tool goes on the opposite side to set the depth. But the most important thing is just making sure that it goes in straight, that it's not cockeyed at all. Also, Cummins recommends like a purple Loctite, Loctite 545 on the outside of these seals. However, the one I got had a red coating on the outside and I imagine that's probably the sealant. The stock one is just plain metal, so that probably requires that Loctite, but the one with the red stuff on it, I'm pretty sure that's already sealed. The crank sensor gap is supposed to be about 50 thou. I took a piece of paper and folded it in half three times and on my micrometer that gave me about 30 thou. That's close enough. You're not supposed to use ferrous feeler gauges, like steel feeler gauges on something like this because it's a magnet and apparently that can mess with them. So piece of paper folded three times worked fine for me. I did rotate the crank a few times to make sure that I wasn't contacting that anywhere. All right, that's killer dowel pin fixed, that's front crank seal done, and that's resealing the front cover done. This all looks a lot better with a little bit of paint and all of the grease scrubbed off of it, so. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for parts in order to do the clutch on this thing. The bolts came in for my clutch. It's only $70 and a week worth of shipping, but now I can finally put my clutch in, so let's do that next. I want to address something about this clutch pivot ball real quick in case this trips anyone else up. So this is what the clutch fork pivots on. And I had to get these parts from 
all over the country. This came from some dude on eBay in Missouri or something. This came from some dude on eBay in Illinois or something. The clutch fork came from Rock Auto. The bell housing came from advanced adapters. Nobody included the spacer that goes on this pivot ball. So I don't have that spacer. I called up AMS Clutch, which is who I got my clutch from, and they let me know that with a single disc clutch, I do actually need that spacer. If I were using a dual disc clutch, I would get rid of the spacer, but since I'm using a single disc clutch, I do need the spacer. And he was also nice enough to let me know that it's a 3 16th washer, 3 16th spacer. So I figured out if I take this stack of three washers, I mic'd it out, 0.195 inches thick, that's within 8 thou of 3 16th, which is 3 16th. Near enough makes no difference. So that's what I'm going to do since I do not have the spacer for this thing. And if you're ever doing one of these, keep in mind, single disc clutch, at least from AMS, you do need a 3 16th spacer. And a dual disc clutch from most places like South Bend and AMS, you do not need the washer, you take it out. If you leave it in on a dual disc clutch, it'll cause your clutch to drag and not disengage all the way. Hopefully that helps somebody. Let's get this installed. You know, okay. No sweater. All right, here she is. Killer dowel pin done. Got it all sealed up, both in the front and in the rear. Got a clutch in it. Got a transmission and transfer case on it. This should be permanently in the chassis now, which is, this feels like it's a pretty big step of progress. Now, I do still need to make some minor adjustments. The number of spacers under the transmission to need to be adjusted slightly to get the angles all right. But other than really minor adjustments, this is a pretty big milestone. There isn't a whole lot more this thing needs before the body can go back on it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for hanging out with me in my garage and subscribe and stick around if you want to see the next one. Thanks for watching.